Take the case of Fernando Bermudez. Five people testified against him, and the judge put him away for life. But was he wrongly convicted of murder? Dick Brennan is here now with an exclusive report for us on this. Dick? Well, Ernie, Fernando Bermudez had an alibi. He says he was driving around with friends. There was no physical evidence against him, no blood, no gun, but there was no getting around those witnesses until now. Tonight, a UPN 9 investigation raises serious questions about the role of police and prosecutors in this case. Mary Ann DeBerry, with the father's help, was able to track down all the witnesses who testified against Fernando and get them to admit that, under pressure, they gave false testimony. An NBC News investigation shows if those witnesses are now telling the truth, then Fernando Bermudez is the wrong man. A young man sent away for the rest of his life. They arrested him and they threw away the keys. They never did another bit of investigation. Accusations of police misconduct. Is this man behind bars for a murder he did not commit? You'll be surprised to hear how he ended up in prison and why the eyewitnesses who put him away now say they made a big mistake. Tonight, a rally in support of a man who says he's been wrongfully imprisoned for 14 years. There was no physical evidence, just eyewitnesses who now admit they were wrong. Now his family wants the courts to do the same. Free Fernando! Free Fernando! Free Fernando! I have been sentenced to 23 to life for a crime I did not commit. I'm a criminal defense attorney. I became involved in the case of Fernando Ramirez in 1993. There is no evidence. I worked for him for 14 years pro bono. I believe in his case. I know him to be innocent. It's what I can prove. All of the evidence points to it. It's long overdue that the truth about the corruption, the scandal, the travesty of justice that's gone on all these years should come out. This man should be home with his wife and children. It happened August 4th, 1991, outside the Mark Ballroom on Union Square. A disturbance broke out among about 50 people, flying fists, broken bottles, and then gunfire. Raymond Blount from Queens was shot dead. Before my arrest, I never in my life heard of the Mark Ballroom. And there was a big concert, rap concert, at the Mark Ballroom on Union Square where groups from all over the city, from the West Side, Hispanic groups from the Lower East Side, from Queensbridge, converged on that part of the city. When I got downtown, we paid $5, we got in. I was there for like two hours without no problems. And that's when I seen this, this Jamaican kid, he was looking at me, talking to his friend about something about Rikers Island. And that's when I approached him and asked him, do you know me? And that's when he hit me. These were young teenagers. These were teenagers who were, uh, many of them had yellow sheets, rap sheets had been involved with the criminal justice system, were into drugs, were into alcohol, were into selling drugs. They converged uh, in this one spot. Why were you punched? Because something about Rikers Island and I approached him, I said, do you know me? I don't know if I came out in a snotty way saying, if you know me, he probably took his Describe the guy who, uh, who spoke to you that way. He was, he was a little taller than me. I couldn't see his hair because he had a brown leather hat on. So I didn't know how his hair was. Was he a black guy, yeah, white guy? Yeah, he was a black guy. I, he, he was Jamaican, I think. Mm -hmm. and so what else did he say to you? That was it. Then he knew you from Rikers? Yeah, that's when he was telling his friend about Rikers. That's when I said, do you know me? Because I was in Rikers Island, and mm -hmm. I got jumped in Rikers Island. So I approached him and said, do you know me? So he probably took it wrong by the way I said it, but I came, you know, snotty. And that's when he hit me. And I swung back at him and his friend, and that's when he punched me on the side of my mouth right here. Raymond Blount punched Jordy Lopez in the nose and he knocked him down. Lopez's friends promised payback when the concert was over. When everybody came out about 2.30 in the morning, the crowd started walking and fighting and scuffling. They headed south a couple blocks. At this point, he from Shorty Lopez points out Raymond Blount to uh, his friend Will Lou and shots fly. The crowd scatters in a hundred different directions and uh, Raymond Blount himself runs down this block, bleeding, shot in the stomach one time. Did this guy, uh, Wulu, tell you what he was going to do to the guy? Have you pointed him out? 
No, he just said. What do you expect him to do when you point to the mat? I mean, I thought they was gonna beat him up, cause they, they, you know, I, they broke bottles. I didn't know they was gonna shoot him or anything. I mm -hmm. had no intentions that he had a gun on him or anything. The night in question, I was with several friends of mine, celebrating my enrollment in college, driving around in my father's car. Bermudez and three of his friends. We're driving from uh, Washington Heights area in Bermudez's father's car. And they drove from Washington Heights downtown. They were cruising for girls. They were looking around and drove back home. But you didn't find any problems with the alibi? I had a uh, polygraph uh, administered, and Bermudez passed with flying colors. Fernando Bermudez had nothing to do with the Rikers Island crowd, with the mock ballroom crowd, with the West 90s crowd, with the Queensbridge crowd with the Chelsea crowd. Anybody in your neighborhood, to your recollection, was at the Mark Ballroom that night? No. Those people that were at that Mark Ballroom that night were from a different neighborhood in Manhattan than where we were from. What were you doing that night? What happened that night? We were just driving around, having a good time. You know, what young guys would do at that time. You know, we were flirting with women. I was with him from noon that Saturday to Sunday morning, 5.15. You were with him every minute? He was in my presence the whole time, and I told the ADA that exactly. Do you have a lie for any of your friends or for Fernando? I'm not lying. He has to get out. He's serving somebody else's time. We got a male shot, 13 and 6. And because the, the police get some 911 calls about this mayhem that's in the streets, kids, teenagers, screaming, yelling, jumping on top of cars, broken bottles, gunshots, many, many gunshots. Basically every precinct in the city go down to that area and pick up teenagers, uh, and just throw them in police cars and bring them to various precincts. They were able to find several eyewitnesses, gathered them up, took them to the precinct, to a catch unit, a place where the eyewitnesses are supposed to look through photographs and see if they can identify the shooter. But how he became involved was through a photograph, a photograph that happened to be filed by mistake in the felony unit of the catch unit. I was arrested for a marijuana charge, which was only a violation, and my, as a result, my picture was taken and was stored on file in the police precincts. If you never got arrested in New York City for marijuana, that photo wouldn't have been there. been there. Fernando Bermudez wouldn't be here. Nothing. You'd be out. You'd be out walking the street. I've learned a lot of things about life now that I used to consider important that are no longer important. These teenagers who were gathered up knew one another and really intimidated into identifying someone, identified someone. Investigators are supposed to separate witnesses making identifications. And these kids were taken in all together at the same time. There was a lot of commingling of witnesses. Uh, one officer goes in and out, another officer goes for pizza. Kids are basically left alone to do what they want in the catch unit. Police said, you're not going home, you're not getting out of here until you guys get together. We know that you know who the shooter is. Attorney Marianne DeBerry knows this case backwards and forwards. She says one witness, a girl, picked out a photo of a guy she thought was cute, who looked like someone else at the Mark Ballroom that night. That photo belonged to Fernando Bermudez, his mugshot from a prior marijuana arrest. And DeBerry says investigators pounced on that picture. It not only gave the police fodder to follow through on this photograph, uh, it also gave the other witnesses in the catch unit the opportunity to be freed. Next thing I know, detectives swarmed on me and arrested me without telling me for what I was arrested for. I went to the police station that night. I was met by Detective Mazanova. He took me up to a room. I, saw, I could notice that there was a camera set up and a microphone on a desk. And all of a sudden, another man came out ADA Rodriguez and he started asking me a ton of questions in regards to what happened that night and I, I just answered everything to the best of my knowledge I told him the truth you know that's what I went down there for to tell him the truth that I was with Fernando the whole time from August 3rd to August 4th 1991 it must have been a, a span of 12 to 13 hours I was with Fernando